Hello, this is James Ebo White. Everyone calls me Uncle Ebo White. Now, in my last presentation, I spoke about the five W's that affect men's mental health. And I promised that I'll come back to those five W's and now look at how they can serve to strengthen a man's mental health or how they can become the five pillars around which a man can build his best life. The five W's were work, wealth, women, wisdom, and then the double-headed wine and weed. For work, I said that a man needs to work and that a man who is unemployed, who has a difficult boss, a man who is not on top of his game in his workplace or a man operating in a toxic environment is in a bad place. For wealth, I use that to represent society's material and financial expectations um, for a man. And I said that a man is supposed to carry every bed and it doesn't have anything to do with his means. Society is so interested in, can you have for this they throw the need at you and you are the man you must be able to make it happen it's almost as if you are supposed to be a magician when you're a man and then i talked about women and i use that not just to represent the gender but everything that goes into a man's relationship with women and then we talked about wisdom and i use wisdom in the narrow sense to mean the values the philosophies and the traditions that society imposes on men and then Wine and weed are used to represent substance abuse and unhealthy lifestyle choices. Now, so today we are going to look at how do we use these same five W's to help a man, let them become the pillar around which a man can build his best life. So we take the first W, work. There are lots of people who think that work is a curse. Is it the result of Adam and Eve chopping the fruit? What they do not realize is that work is a blessing and that Adam's biggest blessing in the garden was the mandate given to him to work it and take care of it. Work was in the original plan. Work is a blessing. And, and yet many people think, no, so... When they have to work, they put in just enough to get by. It is wrong. Now, think about the day that you went home feeling fulfilled, feeling happy. It wasn't the day you went to the office and just sat down and didn't have much to do. No. It is the day that you felt you were going to be squashed by the pressure. It is the day when you were pushed to the wall and yet you came through and you achieved results beyond your own expectations and the expectations of everyone else. That is the day that you go home satisfied and happy. The day that you have done your best work. A man ought to understand that if you are not happy, check your attitude to work. It's important. Because if you are putting in half-hearted um, effort at work, trust me, it will affect you. So commit fully. Anytime I hear somebody say, I hate my work, I say, well, the, it, the problem may not be the work. It may be your attitude to the work. If you committed fully to the work, you may discover that you cannot say, I hate my work. At any rate, there's a principle when it comes to work. And the principle is this. You either do the work you love or you love the work you do. So you're going for the job you love, but if that is not available, whatever work you find, love it. And that will bring you to the same point. Then there are people who say, oh, my work doesn't pay me enough. Well, whenever you find yourself in a place where you know you are not being paid well, it is possible that it is an indication that you need to add value to yourself. Because you see, society does not pay you according to your needs. Society pays you according to the value you bring to the table. Let's go on to the second W, wealth. Now, remember that we used wealth to represent society's material and financial expectations for a man. In other words, the things, you're a man, you should be able to provide this, you should be able to to do this. Now, my advice is that every man must be clear in his mind what he's going to commit to. Because quite a lot of the demands that are made of us, especially in this part of the world, by our extended families, by um, those who depend upon us, are not really, really necessary. And you've got to be careful. Otherwise, what you would find yourself guilty of is that you are funding somebody's irresponsible choices and that is the case with a lot of Ghanaians who are laboring abroad who are working abroad and sending money 
um, down in the form of remittances. Most of them are just funding the irresponsible and lavish lifestyles of the people they think they are supporting. So, for instance, let me ask you a few questions. Your father did not take care of you and your siblings. He wasn't responsible. Then he dies. Must you and your siblings borrow or dissipate all your capital just to give that man what you think is a huge funeral? Does he deserve it? Must you attend every funeral? Oh, must you buy every cloth that they say um, should be used for this funeral? Must you borrow for a wedding you can't afford? You know, you can have a wedding on a budget and the marriage will still be, <laughs> still be valid. So why borrow or empty your savings for a destination wedding when you know you cannot afford it? The point I'm making is that you've got to know that you are responsible for your resources and you are responsible for making choices as to what you commit to and what you don't want to commit to. It is important. Otherwise, what you would find is that you are supporting everything. Yes, there will be demands on you, but the point I'm making is that you do not have to answer every call that, oh, send money, we need money, we need this. You would have to get to the point where you know that you have to be a better steward of your resources and compel everybody else to respect your resources so they don't take it and dissipate it. That is important. So that takes us to our third W, and that is women. Remember that I have used women to stand for everything that goes into a man relating to a woman. Let's be clear from the beginning. Women are not the problem. The problem often for men when dealing with women is our failure to educate ourselves on how to relate to a woman. Because a woman is not a man. Um, somebody once um, told me, James, you must know that a woman is not a man with protruding breasts. He said, we are very, very different. And she was right. So learn how to relate to a woman. Remember, a woman is not a man with protruding breasts. And so um, educate yourself. You must understand that a woman is like fire. Fire can make your life wonderful and comfortable. But the same fire, if not handled well, can burn you and your whole house. So let me throw a few um, random suggestions for you in relating to a woman. Don't be a pushover, but also don't be unbearable. Instead, be T and T. And T and T stands for tough and tender. Know when to be tough, know when to be tender. Don't be tough all the time or tender all the time. You've got to learn to bring the two together. In a sexual relationship with a woman, remember that your goal should be her satisfaction, not your satisfaction only. And on that, you've got to educate yourself on romance and intimacy. Oh, don't lie to a woman. No man is a good enough liar to get away with lying to a woman forever. It will catch up with you. Oh, and don't play games with a woman because you are not smart enough to outplay a woman at games. Well, like I said, these are just random um, suggestions to help you in your relationship with women. Now we go to the fourth W, wisdom. Now, I use wisdom to represent society's um, philosophies, um, values, and even traditions that they expect of man. Unfortunately, a lot of those philosophies, a lot of those um, values may be outmoded, but nobody has updated them. Nobody has questioned them. So you must be responsible for your life and you should be able to decide which values you're going to build your life on. Remember, there's the godly wisdom and then there's worldly wisdom. Choose godly wisdom. Develop your own values based on time-tested principles and godly values. Develop them yourself so that people don't push you around. People don't tell you, you must do this. No, you must have a good reason. And don't be afraid to be a non-conformist if being a conformist makes no sense to you. That brings us to the final W. Now, remember, the final W was a double header: wine and weed. And I use that for negative lifestyles and for substance abuse. Now, <laughs> the, the point to note is that 
men take to wine and weed for two reasons one to answer their need for relaxation and two to find coping mechanisms unfortunately when you resort to wine and weed what you've done is that you've gone for the wrong way to cope and the wrong way to relax because in the long run it will catch up with you it's unfortunate that society celebrates a man substance abuse until it takes over his life no man sets out to be an addict no man sets out to be an alcoholic in fact quite often a man gets into wine and weed on a day. His friends tell him, if you're a man, do this. If, if you don't do this, then you are not a man. Well, the lesson there is that you are a man. You don't need to prove it to anybody. So don't let anybody compel you to prove your manhood. You don't need to. So don't even try. But there's a better way to relax. There's a better way to cope with the stress, day-to-day -day stress that we all are subjected to. The first is your relationship with your loved ones. If you can develop that and let it be a vibrant relationship, you would find that that will provide you with the support you need, with the strength you need to carry on. And that will also bring you the fun that you need. If you have children, spend time with the children. Make it a habit to spend time with the children and you will discover that alcohol comes nowhere near the joy of being with your children so there are healthy ways of coping there are healthy ways of relaxation and you must find them so instead of wine and weed how about wise and win in other words be wise about your choices so you win in the game of life so this has been uncle Ebo white i'm bringing you the five w's that can enhance a man's mental health until i come your way again stay blessed and wise and win